Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking into how we can provide GraphQL APIs using a Spring Boot application. We'll be defining some query operations and then we'll be modifying data using mutations. Finally to cap off, we will write an integration test through which we will verify this entire setup. So with this, let's get started. So let's go to start.spring.io and create our project. So first what we are going to do is we are going to add the Spring GraphQL dependency. Along with this, we'll be adding the GPA dependency and we will be adding an H2 database. So now for GraphQL, we just need the GraphQL dependency. These two dependencies I'm adding just to do some communication with the H2 database. I'm going to give it a name and a group ID called as Spring Graph ql application and we are going to use java 17 and with this let's generate this project now what we are going to do is i already have this project created and i have populated with code let's look at the first thing that is the graphql api now i have this graphql api here wherein what we have here is we are going to define a type that is a person here which has an id which has a name an address and a phone here now next we have an address which is a type address type which is of this particular enum and then we have a street which is of the type string so this address is a nested type of person here and hence we are using the type address in the field address here then we have this particular type which is an enum which has two values that is primary and secondary. These are all the types that we have in the GraphQL. Now what we are going to do is we are going to specify a query. Now here we have a type called as query wherein we have this query name called as person and we are going to specify that we need an ID in order to fetch that particular person and this will return us the person type. Now this is about querying that particular person right now let's look at how we can actually add a particular person information into the database so for this what we have is this input type we have this input type in which we have an id a name and then this forms the input type for creating that particular person along with this we have an input type for address which has an id a person id through which i'm going to link that particular person and then i have the type which is the address type and then I have the street here, which is of the type string. Finally, I'm going to define what are the various type of mutations that I'm going to allow on this. So we have this create person, which has an input called as person input, and it gives the person as the output. Then we have create address, which has the address input, and then it gives us the address output. Okay. Now, why do we have to specify these as input types? Because Mutation works with input types. They don't work directly with the entity types. They return entity types, but they work with input types. Hence, we have to specify them as address input and person input. Now, this is the schema that we have, right? So these are the various types that we have for the GraphQL schema. Now, let's look at the corresponding domain classes. So I have this domain class here, which has this type address. Let's open this here. This is the address type, which has four fields id that is a database id the person id the street and the address type similarly the person that we have here we have an id and a name right now we have not specified anything related to address and phone and i will tell you why exactly i have done this we just have an id and a name being defined address is still kept separate and the phone field i have purposely kept it out because i want to show you how we can do error handling for such kind of things so these are the various classes that we had now let's look at actually defining the particular APIs. So I have this GraphQL controller here. If you see here in this GraphQL controller, it is annotated with at the rate controller and I'm having two repositories. One is the person repository and the address repository. If you see this person repository and address repository here, they are just extending JPA repositories for the address repository is extending the JPA repository and for the person repository is extending the JPA repository also. Let's look at the first query map. Remember, we had this query here, that is a query person. I'm actually mapping this particular query here with this value here. Now, there are two ways you can define this. Either you specify the name of the query as the function name and 
this query mapping annotation will interpret the mapping or you can specify this as a value here as how I have specified it. I have specified another mapping here that is a schema mapping. This is actually related to the field inside this particular person. So remember that in the person class that I had here, I didn't specify anything related to the address, right? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify how the address is going to be fetched and it's not going to be part of the person object itself. It's going to be fetched separately by GraphQL. That's the reason I'm specifying here a schema mapping with the type address here. And then I'm actually fetching that particular address based on the person ID here. So I have this person as an input because I need that person from here as an input to find that particular address here. And apart from this, I'm just putting some sysout statements just for the reason that we can see what is happening in the logs here. Apart from this, I have this particular schema mapping for a phone. What this phone field mapping is going to do is just going to raise an exception. So I'm raising a runtime exception here that we did not find a phone. Say, for example, there was some kind of an error while fetching that particular phone data and we want to handle it. So how do we handle it? We will look at it. Now let's look at the mutation mappings here. For mutation, remember we had specified two that is create person and create address here. So we have this create person mapping here, which you could either name the function as create person here or you could give a different name and specify the name of the mutation. You have this mutation mapping annotation and you specify the input. Now, I have this person input, which is pretty similar to the domain object that I specified. Hence, I'm using the person class as is. But it's a good practice that you have a DTO, which actually takes in the input and then converts it into your domain model. That's like the best practices that you could follow. But for this tutorial, I'm just trying to keep it very simple and not create many classes. Rather, just use this domain class itself. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this particular person inside the person repository. Similarly, I'm doing this for the create address. I have the mutation mapping here for create address mutation. And then I take in the address here as the input. And then I save this particular address into the repository. So these are the mutation mappings that we have here. And these are the query mappings that we have here. Now here you can see the query mapping that we have. You can also specify this as a schema mapping wherein you have the type name that is query and then we can have the value which is the name of the query itself. So we have person here and then this way is yet another way that you can specify a query mapping. But it's better to use a query mapping annotation because it's more readable and that's how you can define the particular query. Now the schema mapping one actually maps to exactly this particular field inside the person. Now with this actually, let's actually look at our properties. So let's go to the properties file here. Now in this properties file, I'm actually enabling this graph IQL interface through which we are going to actually play our GraphQL queries. Now this is a UI that has been provided by Spring Boot GraphQL support through which actually we can make some GraphQL queries and test our application. Now. With this, let's actually start this particular application. So as you can see, the application has now started and we have this particular default endpoint slash GraphQL on which we will be playing our GraphQL queries. Now you can always change this particular path by specifying Spring GraphQL path and then you can specify a path like an endpoint here. So with this, it will actually replace the default GraphQL path that we have here. Let's use actually this default path and let's open our UI. So for this, I'm going to open the GraphQL UI by accessing the path Graph IQL. So we have this Graph IQL UI through which we are going to place our GraphQL queries. Now what this UI also shows is some documentations here. So you can see here the various queries and the mutation types. And let's look at like, for example, the first query, like wherein we have person query through which we can actually get the particular person using the particular ID. You can also then look at that particular person definition itself, wherein it specifies the ID, name, address, and the phone. And this is how you can actually view the GraphQL schema in this particular UI itself. Now with this, actually, let's define our first query. So I'm going to specify query here and this supports autocomplete. So I'm going to create a name like create person and I'm going to specify a name called as create person 
and then I'm going to control space here and specify the query that I want to do. So I want to query the person and here I'm going to specify the ID and I'm going to specify one. Now along with this I'm going to specify what I need as a part of this particular query right. So I'm going to specify that I want the name and I want to display the ID here. With this let's play this particular query. Right now we don't have any information in that database that's why it's returning a null. So let's actually create this particular information right. So let's create a mutation query here. So like create person. Let's call this query as get person and then define the mutation. So let's create this particular person wherein I'm specifying this person having this particular value. So we have this ID as one and the name as Amrut in this case. This is showing me an error here because I need to specify what I need this particular operation to also return. So I'm going to specify that I want an ID and I want the name to be returned here. With this, let's actually create a person. So create person and with this, the create person created that particular ID and the name. Now let's actually try fetching this particular person also. So with this, I can see that the person is now fetched. Now let's do one thing. Let's actually create this address also, right? So I have this mutation here wherein I have a create address specifying the address with the ID, the person ID to which this particular address belongs to. That is this ID that we actually specified here, a type, a street name. And then with this, I'm going to return the type and the street. So let's actually now create this particular address. So with this, the address is now created. So the address got created now, right? Now let's look at the logs here. If you see here, when we were querying for that person, we got that query person, right? Let's clear these logs. And now let's look at querying that particular address also. So we'll specify address here. And along with this, I want to specify what is the type and the street name also. This is going to actually fetch the address information that is related to this particular person itself. With this, actually, let's get that particular person information. So if you see here, we got the name and the ID and then we found the address also related to this particular person. Now, if I go back to the logs here, you can see that it is querying for the person and then it is fetching this particular address. If I go to this particular controller here, you can see that it got the person from here then it was passed as a parameter here and then the corresponding address was fetched from the database and hence you can see this particular log output for querying the person and then internally it fetched that particular address so this is how you can actually separate the fields fetching through this particular schema mapping annotations now here i have this phone field mapping also so let's actually try getting this particular phone field right so i'm going to specify now here a phone and try to query this so get person and now here it shows me an internal error so it shows me an internal error why because we have thrown an exception here but we didn't get this particular message here right why was that because this is an error handler that has been provided by Spring Boot, wherein this will actually handle any kind of data fetching errors and put this into a special array called as the errors array. So this will contain all the errors that have happened and return you to a data that didn't have errors. So like it fetched the name and the ID and then it fetched the address also, but it could not only fetch the phone here. If I want to do some custom error handling, this is even possible. So let's look at how we can do this. So I have this error handler here. In this error handler, I have specified that for these particular exceptions, I have my own custom way of error handling and I'm returning this custom error handling as an array. I had not included this as a spring bean and hence this error handler was not registered. So I'm going to create this particular component now and now let's restart this. So with this, the application has now started and this particular error handler resolver has been registered now. Now let's actually go back here. And since we restarted the application, we have to create the person again because we were using the H2 database. So let's create the person quickly, then create the address quickly. And now let's try fetching this particular person. So get person. And as you can see, it actually fetched the data that we saved just now and 
it gave me the custom error message that we were actually trying to modify so we had this error handler which actually provided us this particular message which is actually the exception message that we were throwing from here did not find phone data and this is what is a part of this errors array here so with this actually we created the graphql schema then we define a handlers to actually provide this particular data we then actually then provided our error handler to actually modify the errors that we want to report now all of this thing works but we have to write tests for this right so spring graphql support also provides an easier mechanism to write tests so let's go to this particular test here so i have this person graphql test wherein i am putting this particular annotation auto configure graphql tester and then i'm auto wiring this graphql tester here now using this graphql tester i'm going to make some graphql queries so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this graphql tester and then i'm going to fetch the query from this document name now where is this document name present so if i go to this resources section here i have this graphql hyphen test folder and inside this i have this graphql queries here so i have this person hyphen mutation dot graphql file here and in this i have the mutation operation i'm creating the person with this id and name and i'm trying to return it the id and the name so i'm now going to actually execute this particular mutation and then i'm going to find this particular path and then check if it is equal to this particular name here so it's actually creating this particular person and then afterwards it's returning me the id and the name and i'm checking if the name corresponds to the name amrut similarly i have this particular query operation here wherein i have this person query which i've defined it here again and this has an input with an id and then afterwards i'm returning that particular id and the name here i need to specify this with a dollar this is a reason because this is a particular variable that i'm going to populate in my test and this test will actually pass this particular id variable and then after send it to this particular person query so if i go back here i specified this id variable with a value 1 which will be used here and then afterwards we will make a query for the person returning the id and the name once we execute this graphql query we will then extract the person dot name path and then after we check if this value is equal to amrut now this is a simple test wherein it actually creates that information and then afterwards it actually fetches that information from the database now let's actually first stop this application and run our test so let's run this test now so if you see here the test when successfully it actually saved that particular person here and then afterwards it actually fetched that particular person entity now if you want to write really good tests in spring boot i would recommend this particular course from philip called as testing spring boot application masterclass now this is a comprehensive course through which you can learn the various testing libraries that we have how you can write good and efficient tests right from unit tests to integration tests and then end-to-end -end tests also so you can enroll to this particular course using the link in the description below and then afterwards you can learn how you can speed up your skills for testing Spring Boot applications. So, we saw how we can provide GraphQL APIs using a Spring Boot application. We then created some queries and then even modified data using mutation operations. And finally, to cap off, we also wrote an integration test to test this entire setup. Now, I keep on exploring such kind of things. So, if you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this particular channel for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and see you in my next one.